Charles Malky, biologist and plant expert with Ivory Organics, where we grow cool plants. And today I've got behind me a bear's lime tree. The bear's lime um, is also known as the Tahitian lime, as well as another name being the Persian lime. So those are three common names for the bear's lime tree, which is a seedless lime. And I know that you're thinking limes are green, but here we are at the end of November. I'm in the city of Walnut Creek, California. We're less than 30 miles away from San Francisco to our west. And um, the climate here is very hot in the summer. And the winter is right now. Here we are at the end of November. Our daytime highs are in the 60s, nighttime lows in the 40s. And there's a lot of nights that are even dipping near and hovering around the freezing temperatures. But these are trees that I've installed here for the owner about 10 years ago. And the tree behind me is a semi-dwarf um, variety growing on average semi dwarfs will grow anywhere from about 8 feet to up to 15 feet tall it's a very vigorous type of um, fruit tree as well but I want to show you what the inside of this fruit looks like if we open it here this here is a yellow one and I'm gonna pick for you also a one that's a little more green which I found over here and let's take a look at the inside of this fruit if you take a look here if you want to zoom in a little closer I'll just cut this down the center take a look this here is what you'd expect with a lime you can see it's um, pretty green in the center but we'll cut this one here and open it and you can see that as it ripens it gets a little more yellowish so the bears lime a seedless um, variety of lime very juicy and we enjoyed um, yesterday squeezing hundreds of these and turning them into um, some lemonade or we can call it limeade that the family got to enjoy the first thing I want to share with you, when it comes to pruning your trees, the goal is, as you can see, there's a lot of branches that have soared over the um, top of the tree. If we allow these branches to continue, they'll create multi-branches that will ultimately shade the lower part of the tree. And it'll... So in order for this beautiful bear's lime to maintain its bushy form, it's important to remove those highest branches. By keeping those branches, they'll ultimately um, form more branches and shade these lower branches and take away from the vigor that's happening down here. The tree will ultimately want to reach its maximum height and fruit, you know, in a place that's just inaccessible. So what we need to do is bring the plant down by removing those highest branches. And I'm gonna do so right now. So by removing those highest branches, what we're now doing is telling the tree to put your vigor down here in our reachable zone. We're going to now enjoy, you know, harvesting these fruits and we're going to be picking as many more as the family can possibly enjoy. And we're going to remove these fruits between now and come February and March and we're going to continue to enjoy them. And in the interim, what this plant's going to do is put out some more blossoms which will support the next year's um, fruit harvest. This tree is a beautiful addition to the garden where everything else is going into dormancy and dropping their leaves and has no fruit. The citrus here are doing remarkably well. Let me share a couple more trees with you as well. But before we do, there's one more thing I noticed on the inside of this canopy which the owners were not aware of. And if I can um, bring you up here, if you take a look on the center, I've noticed that someone pruned a branch and right in this zone over here, you can see that the bark has been stripped. And what we're gonna to need to do is now coat it because all of this wood is exposed wood, which beetles, termites, you can see that it looks like there's some mold that's happening on it as well and some rot. 
what we're gonna need to do is coat it with the Ivory Organics 3-in-1 Tree Guard paint and that will at least offer it some protection while the plant continues to heal over the years. Before we do that, let me share a couple more citrus with you as well. Take a look. Let's take a piece of the fruit and let's cut it open. Stay right here. If we can identify this together. So this is um, a variety of orange. And if you take a look at it again, this is a 10 year old tree. And I measure six feet tall and most of the tree is under six feet of height. So this is a compact dwarf, possibly a semi dwarf tree. Um, and what controls the height is down here. If you can take a look at the rootstock, you can still see evidence from the farmer where this here um, is actually got some green paint on it and the top which is the um, scion wood or the desired flavor of tree is um, indicated by the white paint that's over here so this here was grafted onto a rootstock that's controlling its height and you can see that it's growing at two different speeds the bottom is getting um, wider and more um, compact and this um, is growing a little bit slower but again it's all being controlled by the roots if you grafted this variety of orange onto a standard size rootstock it would grow anywhere from 15 to 25 feet Whereas this one here is grafted on a dwarf, and that's again keeping the height to below six feet in height. Let's take a look at a couple more citrus to my left. So here's another fruit. This appears to be another orange, similar. Take a look at the center, how it's got that pink. Um, mark the same as this one over here they seem to be very similar in variety I've got to take a taste I'm thinking now it might even be a grapefruit and it is it's definitely a grapefruit take a look at this last citrus look at how small Look at how small and compact this tree is. And this here is an orange, uh, as you can tell by the coloration on this one. But talk about height. This one is only, what, measuring probably four feet in tops. And I'm trying to see if the label's still on there. But anyways, so this orange measures only four feet. And again, what's controlling its height is the rootstock. So when you go to your nursery and you're selecting your fruit variety, Make sure that you pick a variety that is suitable for the area where you want to grow it. As you can see, these three to four trees are all of the dwarf varieties. The first lime tree that we saw, the bear's lime, that's clearly a semi-dwarf as it's measuring you know, closer to 10 feet. And let me share with you what a Mexican lime looks like and how tall that can get. Follow me. So behind me here is the Mexican lime tree, another variety of very popular limes that you'll find in your nursery. These limes are always going to be smaller, probably measuring, compared to the bar, bear's line that can measure between two to two and a half inches, this one usually measures about maybe an inch um, in diameter or less. And let's take a look at the inside and take a look at all of these fruit that have fallen in just the last couple of weeks. And we'll open that up here and you can see that it's got a couple of small seeds in there. But this here again, the Mexican lime tree. One last citrus I want to share with you. So here we are now with the Eureka lemon tree. Again, a lot of fruit that's on the floor. Let me pick one of these fruits for you so you can see what the inside of this looks like. The Eureka lemon, nearly seedless um, in this instance. Sometimes I've um, found as many as one to three seeds in there as well. Um, but a fairly low seeding um, variety. But take a look at how large this tree is. Again, another standard size um, lemon tree. So again, the standard lemon trees, when you pick them up from your nursery, can grow 15 to 25 feet in height, as this one has done over here. And the issue I wanna share with you is take a look at these leaves. And hopefully you can see how light they are. Um, they're starving for nutrition. 
Um, I don't know the last time that these owners have fed them. When I discussed fertilizing, they both didn't know the last time um, any of them have fertilized these trees. But what is important to do, and again in winter, you don't feed your plants with any organic or chemical fertilizers, but something you can do is do a nutritional spray and these leaves will just absorb those nutrients and they'll green up and they'll have more energy to help support the plant, support more fruit come springtime. So make sure if you're, you know, um, have any citrus and you haven't fed them well um, during spring, summer, and fall, something you can do as an added plus for your trees is um, a nutritional spray. And I'll put a link down below where we did that um, at another property just a few weeks ago. So this is a tip you can apply to your plants come December, January, and February before March is when you're gonna go and, and enrich the soil with more organic fertilizers. One other point I wanna make before we head back to our station. So behind me I have, so behind me have another citrus um, variety. It looks like it appears to be another lemon as well. But what I wanted to point out over here is take a look at all of the dead wood that's in here. And there's a lot of dead branches. And what we need to do is make sure you're pruning the dead branches. And it's not just winter time that you can prune dead branches off of your citrus. You should be pruning your branches any time of the year that you see dead wood. As this is taking energy away from the plant. As you can see over here, there's some life that's still in here. If I were to scratch this, there should still be some green under here. I mean, the wood is still alive. I don't know if you can capture that in the video, but it's leading to these branches that are clearly dead. So the plant is wasting energy and resources, and at the same time, the risk is there could be beetles and termites and other um, pests that can enter the dead wood and work their way into the living wood within the heart of the tree, which is the supporting structuring wood of the plant. So again, when it comes to the dead wood, just simply cut it all out and there's no right and wrong time of the year when there's dead wood you just remove it let's get back to our workstation so here we are now in the canopy of a mandarin orange tree which you see over here and you'll notice that the base of the plant was coated with the ivory organics three in one tree guard paint color white it also is available in brown as well as green if you're looking for some more natural colors and the reason this one um, has been coated and, and spotted is primarily because of the trunk is just exposed to just too much light. When I was out here about four months ago, I noticed this one here was suffering from some sunburn. It's now coated with the ivory organics, but there's another benefit. As the first tree that we saw, that bear's lime tree, where we went into the canopy and we noticed that the bark was exposed and the wood was exposed, um, the same thing applies to also when branches are pruned. If you come in a little bit closer here, you'll notice that on these branches, that are on these branches over here. I'm gonna to touch it over here. This here is exposed wood. If termites were to enter, it would work its way into the heart of the tree, as are these branches that was pruned. There's another branch over here that was pruned. And then there's some damage on this side over here as well, which also needs to be coated and sealed right there. And so what we're gonna do, and I'm gonna share this product with you now, is we're gonna put this Ivory Organic. So it's Ivory Organic, it's a three-in-one tree guard paint where you just add water. It's a natural tree trunk and branch barrier for protection against damaging sunburn and insects and rodents for use on your roses, fruit, nut trees, ornamental trees, and shrubs. And it's a non-toxic, environmentally safe and organic product. And it's used to save injured and damaged trees, prune and expose surfaces. And it's ideal for new plantings and transplants as this product can be diluted with a spray of a couple of teaspoons per gallon of water and then use as a foliar spray to keep your plant um, relieved from any sun stress as well as it'll um, coat the plant and keep it cool during the hot summer days. The other can I want to share with you is this over here which is our gold label which will be hitting nursery stores sometime later um, winter and possibly early spring and what's unique about this one is it um, now shows that it's registered material for use in organic agriculture and we're very proud about this as well um, that our farmers can now use it and rely on it as an organic product but what i'm going to do here real quick is just show you how this product works and what it is is an organic paint and it also has in it a lot of organic oils um, some of the oils i had this mix just before the video let me just mix this down a little bit more but it has the organic paint, organic paint as well as those organic oils that one, help repel rodents from gnawing on the tree. And I've lost some citrus in my garden 
to the rodents that have actually gnawed around the tree. And this is a phenomenon that usually happens in the winter, as well as it prevents sun scald, which is when we have some warm days followed by um, freezing nights. And when the temperature drops, that can cause the trunk to crack. And by actually reflecting the excess heat during the day, that'll prevent the tree from cracking. So this is a process I'm just gonna um, repeat and recoat after we conclude this video. So I'm gonna take my time after this, but you can see what the goal is over here. We're gonna to try to coat all the surfaces and then just basically paint all around the tree to offer it the protection. So you can see here that I'm basically coating this exposed surface. Again, this is the underlying supporting wood. The living tissue is only on each side of it. This here is the bark. The cambium tissues lie underneath and are expanding to fill in this exposed wood, which was some damage that was caused either by sunburn or someone pruned a branch and ripped and stripped the bark all the way down to this lower point. So we're offering this plant protection by coating it now with the Ivory Organics 3-in-1 Tree Guard paint. And even if you don't paint it all around the tree trunk as we did um, below, as you can see with the lower branches, they're all coated in white. And you can see there's a lot of pruning that was done. So all of those um, prune, prunes are covered with the Ivory Organics. And so this here was some more damage I didn't, um, I didn't observe before. And now I just caught in and wanted to share that with you as well. So now we've just offered protection to this plant as well, like so. So if you found this video informative, be sure to like it. Most importantly, subscribe down below. By subscribing below, you'll be connected to all the other educational Ivory Organics gardening videos. Thanks again for watching and happy gardening.